If you guys are anything like me, you love to modify your car, even when they come with 500 horsepower from the factory. Now, with these modern BMWs come modern day problems like locked DMEs that prevent flash tuning. But in today's video, we're gonna show you how to get around that and add nearly 100 wheel horsepower to your BMW with Daler. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. In today's video, we're gonna show you how we achieved a gain of nearly 100 wheel horsepower on our G80 M3 with the Daler Performance Module, which we're going to dyno test later in today's video. Now, as many of you know, we're very conscious on what kind of modifications we do to our cars. For one thing, we wanna make sure that the EPA is never gonna show up and knock on our door. That is one of the reasons that for this car, a couple months ago, we put a Daler exhaust on, which is EPA friendly. It's German TUV approved, which is very rare, and it sounds super aggressive, and everybody who hears it absolutely loves it. <laughs> Which leads us to today's product. We're going to be installing the Daler Performance Module. Again, this is a TUV approved product, just like the exhaust. It's engineered in Switzerland and made in Germany, super high quality. And on 93 octane pump gas, it's gonna take my car and give it nearly 100 wheel horsepower. 100 horsepower, the car comes with 500 from the factory. And again, you're gonna see all of this on the dyno charts later. And spoiler alert, it gave us over 600 wheel horsepower, all wheel drive in this G80 M3, which is completely insane. And another thing with this, we're going to be doing all of this with a completely stock locked DME. We didn't take it out, we didn't send it to Russia, we didn't have it hacked and unlocked and all of that. We didn't have all that extra time and expense. Literally, all we're going to do is plug this in a couple different sensors, which we're gonna walk you through in just a minute and you get that instant huge power gain. So with that, let me show you how to install it. As you'll see behind me, we are doing this on my 2022 G80 M3. If you have a G82 M4 or another S58 power car, like an X3M or X4M, it is basically the same exact process. So let's talk about what we have on the table and then we'll get started. Now for what we're going to be installing today, we have of course our Daler performance module. We have our wire harness, and then you have this little plug over here. So basically what this is, is it enables you to leave all of your wiring in place, but if you need to go to the dealer or you just wanna run the car without a tune for a while, all you do is plug this in where the tuner goes and it completely disables the tune and makes the car run on its factory settings. Now, as far as tools are concerned, you need a flathead. I would recommend a couple pick tools. You're gonna to need a good flashlight, preferably one that can get in a tight area. You're going to need a couple sockets. We have a 10 mil, we have a 13 mil, and a 15 mil with some extensions. And then we have our power driver. Basically what's going to happen, we're gonna pop the hood, we're gonna pull off the brace, we're gonna pull off the engine cover, and we need to remove the intake just on the driver's side of the vehicle, which is super simple. Now I do have an MST intake, but it's going to remove very similar to how a factory intake would as well. Then there is one 10 millimeter nut that needs to be removed. I'll explain that as we get there. And then we have this nice plug and play harness, again, 100% reversible. Then we're going to route the wires in a convenient location, plug in the tuner, and we're done. So with that, let's pop the hood and get started. Now, if you haven't popped the hood in your car yet, it is a double latch system, so pull that lever by your foot twice. All right, for the first part, you need your 15 and you need your 13. The 13 is for this bolt down here in the middle. And then you have eight other of these 15s. Be very, very careful when taking them off. I was doing a project the other day for testing and I dropped one into the great unknown. So just be careful you don't do that. So at this time, remove all of the 15s up here and that 13 and then remove your bracing. Then what you want to do is just very carefully go along the edge and pop up your engine cover. So once I get this off, I'll show you where the little grommets are. So there's just four. It's basically, besides the sides, basically in each corner. So just very carefully pull them off. I would recommend going to each side and lifting up. If you just grab it from the front and rip it up, there's a really good chance that you're going to crack one of these little holders. Next, we need to remove the intake. So again, I have an MST intake. So I'm just going to remove my filter here. Slide this off, just like that. Then we're going to disconnect this plug so that we can get our intake out. Put this up out of the way for now. Then you're gonna take your flathead and you're just gonna pop up the C-clip. Make sure that it's released 
from the side grooves. Once you have it like that, you can just take this and pull it straight out. Just be very careful of that coolant line. Now to make sure that you're not gonna drop anything into your inlet, which will go into your turbo, I recommend just putting a clean microfiber towel to cover it. Now, when you're doing this, you do not need to disconnect your battery. The general rule of thumb is you wanna let the car kind of go into a, a little bit of a sleep mode. So once you pop your hood, make sure your key is far away from the car, let the car sit for about five minutes before you start unplugging things and you'll be fine. So what we need to do, we need to tap into this sensor over here, which registers the intake pressures. Then down here, what I actually did is I painted it white. So if you take a look down there, this is our boost pressure sensor. Way down here, I actually painted it white with a chalk marker so that you guys could see it a little bit easier. Then we have our camshaft positioning sensor. And then right over here, we have the sensor that controls our fuel rail. So let's start at the top. We'll go intake, then we'll go boost, then we'll go camshaft, and then we will go over here to the fuel rail. All right, so let's start over here with the green one. And this is going to go to our intake. So if you're not familiar with BMW connections, basically the way that it works is you take uh, like a flathead screwdriver and then you pop this open like that. Then you press down and then this slides off. So just once again, this locks this little tab in place. Then you twist it and that releases the lock. And then once you press down on it, it moves the clip. What we're going to do is we are going to take this, we're going to clip it in and lock it on one side of our harness. And then on the other side, you're going to take it, slide it in until it clips, and then lock it in place. Now, typically with these connections, it's not possible to flip it upside down. You have to make sure that everything is in the correct slot. Um, if it's not fitting and you try it upside down, just double check your harness, make sure that you have the correct plug in your hand. All right, so for our next connection, we have to get way down there. And as you can see, it is super tight. Uh, but once we start to move some things out of the way, it's gonna make it a lot easier to do. So let me walk you through the process of what we're gonna do and then we'll actually do it. So first off, there is a 10 mil right over here. We are going to take that nut off. Be careful you don't drop it because you're not gonna see it again. Next, we are going to remove this hose clamp, which houses this coolant line. And what we're going to do after that is we're gonna maneuver it out of the way. There's a plug over here for your water pump, which is this thing right here. Um, as I said before, we're not disconnecting any coolant lines or anything, we're just gonna shift it out of the way. So make sure when you go to reinstall that you plug it back in. Once you do that, we can maneuver the water pump up and out of the way so that you can get your hand down here where our pressure sensor is. Again, we'll show that to you once we get to that point, but what I did before this video is I colored it white with a white chalk marker so that you guys knew exactly which connection we were working with. So let's get started at the top. I'll grab the 10 mil and we'll remove that nut. All right, so now that that's out of the way, what you do is you just lift right there and then this is going to separate just like that. And then this is just so we can maneuver it out of the way. Okay, next we need to disconnect the line that powers the water pump. So take a flathead screwdriver, you can push this little tab down. And then typically if you just push down with your driver, a lot of times you can get it to um, just can completely remove. Sometimes it's a little more difficult. There we go, so I got that to come off. Um, and now I can move this out of my way. Next, what you're gonna do, we're gonna lift this off, this little tab right there, off this, um, the bolt from where we re removed the 10. But before we do that, we gotta make sure that this is on this side of the pump. Just maneuver that around until it pops off. The angle's a little bit funny sometimes. There it goes. And then, once you've done that, you can kind of duck this out of the way. And if you can see, I'll get my little pointer, right down here where the white connection is, is where we need to get to. All right, so if you take a look down here again, I, I colored it white so you didn't mistakenly do the other plug. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm, you're not really gonna be able to see this part, but I'm gonna reach my hand down and I am going to unclip that little white tab and then I'm gonna pull the rest of it off and then we're gonna plug in the harness. All right, so if you ever have one um, that's maybe in an awkward location, what you can do if you're having trouble, 
you can lift up the tab from the back and then you can actually just lift up the tab. Um, I'll show you on one that is up top, but as you can see right now, we do have it disconnected. So just to give you a little clearer view of what I just did, um, once again, this has this little tab. Sometimes the tab gets a little bit stuck, so I reached around with a pick tool, lifted it up, and then pulled it off. So let's plug in our new sensor. Now look for the connection with the purple tag on it, and we are going to take this side first. I'm going to clip it into the sensor. Make sure that your little tab is facing up. Okay. I clipped it in. I locked it in because I don't want that falling out. And now I'm going to take the other side and reach down, grab the sensor. And I'm going to plug that in as well. Okay, that's clipped in and that is locked. All right, once you have that connected, we're going to put our water pump back. You will notice that there's this little tab on the opposite side here of the water pump it goes into this little grommet. So you wanna make sure that that goes in there to make sure everything's fully seated. All right, so I have the bottom lined up. I'll slide this over and then push that down. And then super important, do not forget to plug your water pump back in. So reach down here, grab your plug for your water pump, slide that back on and then lock it in place. And then I need, just need to go and get my 10 mil, secure that. And then I need to put this line back. So again, so I'll spread it like that. Let me go get that nut. Next, you're going to take your orange wire and we are going to go into the camshaft positioning sensor, which is this one here. I'm gonna take our new harness, plug it in, lock it down. Now this one, um, it locks on the back instead of the front, just as a little heads up. And then this locks like that, and then you're good. And then we just have one more, which is our fuel rail pressure. Okay. And this one is blue, and they also say what they are. Like this one says rail sensor, this one says camshaft. Um, the only two that aren't distinguished are the, the boost ones, but one has three and the other one has four. So we'll plug that in, lock it. And with this side, plug that in and lock it in place. Okay, now we can't leave all these wires everywhere. So you need to think about where you wanna put your control module. So some people like to put it on the strut brace. I personally like to put it up there so nobody sees it. Um, I don't like to advertise that we added horsepower. So if we're at a car show, I like to be a little more incognito. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna grab some zip ties and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna route some of these wires along here and try to make it a little bit more discreet. We're gonna route everything up there and that's where I'm gonna mount my actual control unit. All right, so now that I am this far, I have all my wiring where I need it to go. I just have to cut a couple zip ties. I'm just gonna take my tuning module. I'm gonna plug it in like that. And then there's a couple different holes. There's two on the sides and then there's one at the bottom here. I'm going to zip tie the bottom one down to a wire harness that you're not really gonna be able to see just so it's not moving around. Now what we can do we can lock that in place. There you go. So that's pretty discreet. And then at this point, I can put my intake back on and I can re-plug in that sensor right there, put the engine cover, the bracing, and then everything's done. Best way to line this up is just aim for the oil location. Pop that down. We're good like that. So as you just saw, the performance module from Daler is pretty easy to install and only takes about 30 minutes or so. Now in your package, you may also receive something that looks like this, and this is the bypass plug. What you can do is if you ever want to completely disable the tune, you can take off the performance module and put the bypass plug on, and that's just going to default to your factory tune. So that being said, we are ready to capture some bass tunes with the bypass module plugged in, which is going to force the stock tune. Now in addition to the car being back on its stock tune, 
tune with the Daler wiring in place. The only modification that the car had was the MST intake. We did the dyno sessions actually before we put the Daler exhaust on. So even today, it would probably actually read a couple horsepower higher. Now, whenever we dyno, what we like to do is we like to do two or three runs, then take an average, then do our performance upgrade, and then do a couple more runs, average it, and then see what the average gains are. Now, before we get started, as a reminder, we are running 93 octane, just pump fuel in the car, and we had the car in four wheel drive sport, which puts the emphasis to the rear of the vehicle. So with that, let's get started with run number one. Now for run number one, we were expecting to get like 480 horsepower or so, especially since it's all wheel drive and you have all that drivetrain loss, but we were shocked that we put down a whopping 513 wheel horsepower in 466 foot pound of torque. So again, very close to the numbers that BMW actually publishes. I, it's one of the things that like you're very happy that a manufacturer lies about because BMW says that the number is this and it's normally crank power and then you get it to the wheels and you're like, thank you BMW. But we couldn't stop there, so off to run number two where we put down 518 wheel horsepower and 472 foot pound of torque. And then for run number three, we put down 514 wheel horsepower and another 472 foot pound of torque, which gives us an average of 515 wheel horsepower and 470 foot pound of torque, again, to the wheels. I am super happy with these numbers, but as you guys know, there is more power coming. So we put the Daler tuner back on the car and then re-ran it. Now, while I'm sitting in my car on the dyno with my foot to the floor, just watching the gauge go up, it's really hard to tell how fast the car is going or how hard it's pulling because you could have a Honda Civic or a Ferrari and it pretty much feels the exact same when you're sitting on the dyno. So in my head, I'm thinking like, man, if we could get high 500s, that would be a huge win, especially considering that this is a plug and play tuner. The DME is completely locked. You know, it's like, how much power can you really add? But after a few seconds, the run was over and the number appeared on the screen. We got 610. 610 wheel horsepower in 546 foot pound of torque. I couldn't believe that we actually passed 600 and it wasn't like 601, 602. We got 610, which in my eyes was just a huge win and we were super excited. But with dynos, you always want to do it multiple runs. So we did it again. Check out that consistency. Yet again, 610 on the dot wheel horsepower and 544 foot pound of torque. So as you can see, extremely close to the first number. And what we typically like to do is we typically like to do a third run. However, on the day that we did this, it was much warmer than it is today. And we didn't hook up the cooling lines and we set off the high temperature alert for one of the pods. What's that sound? Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. So we actually had to end short, but we had two super solid runs. So from there, what we did is we took an average of the first three runs, which gave us an average of 515 wheel horsepower and 470 foot pound torque and an average of the second set of runs with the performance module installed, 610 wheel horsepower and 545 foot pound of torque, which gives us a gain of an average of 95 wheel horsepower. Yes, 95 wheel horsepower on 93 octane in 75 foot pound of torque. So as you can imagine, we were completely blown away. We've driven the car for, we did this actually about a month ago or so, so you can imagine we have driven the car a ton and the car pulls so hard. It was fast before, now it's like ludicrous. So to sum up today's video, as you saw, the Daler performance module is pretty easy to install. Doesn't matter if you have a locked DME or an unlocked DME. So it works on a number of cars, especially the newest of the newest cars, which I think is super cool, especially since we have one here in the shop. And as you can see by the dyno testing, the wheel horsepower gains on 93 octane fuel were completely astonishing and we are super excited to be able to break that 600 wheel horsepower mark. I mean, on blue over here, we were able to do it, but we're not even gonna talk about how much money we had to spend to get to that power level. 40,000. $281. And as we said earlier, it is a super high quality product out of Germany and Switzerland that has that TUV stamp of approval. So you know that the product is well vetted out. So once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach behind the camera. If you are interested in Daler products for your BMW, be sure to see the links down in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.